All right. Hello and welcome to part two of chapter four. Okay, so let's continue where we started off. Uh, started off. Um, just don't forget, I'm going to ask you to write notes on this video as well and upload those as homework. So let's talk about troubleshooting the electrical system. All right. So here's the first thing I want you to write down. Write these all these the possible symptoms that you may have with an electrical problem, uh, if it's an electric problem. So let's discuss each one of those. If the computer appears to be dead, and there's no indicator lights or no spinning fan, that means you may have something with the electrical problem. It could be the power supply, it could be the outlet. The computer, if, if the computer sometimes locks up during booting or several tries, it could, you know, and after several tries, it boots successfully. That's also could be an electrical problem. Error codes or beeps occur during booting, but they come and go. So check out these codes and look at that beep in, on the previous, um, from here, right? From page 183. So uh, if you smell burnt parts or order, if you smell something, like something's well, definitely that's not a good sign. Something got burnt. So unplug, you know, unplug it from the wall outlet. If the computer powers down at, a, at unexpected times, that could be an issue too. And of course, power problems with the motherboard. Oh, I'm sorry. If the computer appears to be dead, but you hear a whining sound coming from the power supply, again, that could be an issue. So you can take that and uh, that, goes, that gives you a good step. They can, you know, say that this might be an electrical problem. You can use your multimeter to double check the power coming out of the wall outlet, which should be about 120, uh, between 110 and 120 volts AC. And you can check out the, um, the cables that are coming out of the power supply. They should be about 5, 12, or 3.3 volts, right? All right. Now, let's talk about, so those are the problems that we talked about. Let's take about, what about problems with power to the motherboard uh, that could be a big issue so if anything have if you think there is power problems on the motherboard something got shorted uh, you really can't do anything and it's not worth changing components on the motherboard nobody does that you need to toast the motherboard and get another one that's the only way to do it the motherboard has to be replaced uh, what about if the system is overheating? Okay, so you need to um, take a look at that. So here we go. Write these steps down to notice if the power system of the power supply is overheating. Number one, uh, if the system hangs or freezes at odd times or fuses just for a few seconds and it boots uh, after the boot starts, that could be a sign of overheating. The Windows PSOD error uh, occurs during booting, or you cannot hear a fan running. That's definite, or you hear a whining sound. That could be overheating. Or you cannot feel the air being pulled in, in or out of the case. So um, that's called, so could be bad power supply too, not necessarily overheating, right? So what do you do to resolve the overheating problems? Well, if you suspect overheating, step number one, all right? If you suspect there's overheating, go into the BIOS UEFI setup and view the temperature monitors for the system. To protect the expensive processor and the other component, you can also purchase a temperature sensor if you want. That's number one. So go into the BIOS UEFI, write that down to, to resolve overheating problems. Number two, um, excessive dust will insulate the components and causes overheating. Use the compressed air to get rid of the all the dust that's inside. Check the airflow inside the case, right? Uh, install extra fans if you have to, if there's the, if there's space available. Um, so one way or another, another, improve the airflow. Move the cables. You know the. Uh, the power supply cables, because they could um, hinder the airflow. Um, what else? 
So there's a whole bunch of other things that you could do. Make sure that all of these are closed, the airflow, so you don't get dust in there. Uh, move the cables nice and neat aside so you can let the airflow that the fan runs, make sure uh, you, that the fans are plugged in, right? They're powered. And uh, what else do you need to know? You need to have a good airflow going on. All right. Uh, let's take a look at problems with laptops. Now, if the power is not getting to the system or the battery indicator light uh, is lit when the AC adapter uh, should be supplying power, verify that the AC adapter is plugged into a live electrical outlet. So your AC adapter should has a green uh, LED. You know, verify that that LED is on. If that LED is not on, on the on the brick, uh, that means you're not getting power from the wall outlet, right? It may not be plugged in correctly, or the wall outlet is not supplying AC power. So that's one thing to, to check. If you're getting power, if the battery is not charging, it may be the um, the battery is going bad, right? So you may have to get a new battery, all right? If the battery is hot, remove it from the computer and you got to allow it to cool down to room temperature. All right, and um, let's take a look at, this is what happens if you have problems with motherboard, the processor or memory is failing. So how do you notice that? And what do you do about that? So let's stack up. Did I move? I think uh, no, we moved too quickly. So yeah, troubleshooting motherboard processor and RAM. So write the following down. I want you to write these down because there's a very good chance your first job is going to be a help desk, and you are going to be, um, you know, the person to come to when it comes to problems. So you want to be able to pinpoint or give suggestions on what the problems might be. And by writing these downs, that will give you a good start, all right? So, motherboard processor and memory problems. Number one, write these down. The system begins to boot, but then powers down. It could be any of these three, uh, motherboard processor or memory. If you get an error message is displayed during boot, investigate what this message is. The message may tell you exactly what the problem is. If the system reports less memory, you know, if you go into the BIOS and you see less memory than what you already have, maybe a memory uh, module is bad. Um, if the system becomes unstable, hangs, and freeze or freezes at odd times, uh, this could be multiple issues. It could be the power supply, it could be the RAM, it could be the hard drive, the motherboard, memory errors. Any of that could uh, could uh, have the system freeze. It could be malware too. Uh, so, but anyway, but that's, you know, that's a sign. It might be either there's a short on the motherboard or something on the motherboard that's not working correctly. Memory modules are bad. Um, it could be anything. I doubt the processor goes bad very hardly, or unless it's, you know, the fan on top of it is not working. And uh, when the CPU overheats, it just freezes. So check out the processor. For the processor problem, it's most likely the fan is not working and it's not really sucking out the heat. Uh, the motherboard itself, um, if you got problems with the motherboards, you're, nothing is going to work. Because if you turn the computer on, you hear the fan, the power supply is running, but nothing else kicks in because the first thing that needs to kick in is the post the power on self-test and if you don't hear anything after the power supply uh, you, you you know you verify that the power supply is working it's probably a motherboard issue and of the uh, and a motherboard issue is uh, can be a problem in fixing it so you really got to decide is it cost effective to do that all right so components on the motherboard or devices connected don't work you know what are you going to do it all depends on how expensive the motherboard is it rams freezing up is the most common. You know, check the RAM, make sure they are seated correctly in their slots. That's something to look at. Uh, if they, if you buy a cheap RAM from a cheap manufacturer, there's a very good chance 
after a certain amount of usage, they start going bad. So um, most likely the RAM before I suspect the processor or a motherboard that causes the freezing. So you double check that, assuming that the operating system is okay, is not corrupted, of course. But with software problems, we'll talk about that some other time. All right, so, um, so you can take all these steps by step on what the problems might be. That's a pretty good idea to follow these 17 steps, right? Um, that starts on page 195. Okay, so look at those. That's also a good reference. This chapter is a pretty good reference when you are troubleshooting hardware. All right, so keep that in mind. Chapter four. All right, so let's move on and Windows startup repair. So this is, we'll discuss a little bit more about that when we talk about the software part of this course later on. But the Windows startup repair or Windows 7, 8, and 10 you can use the startup repair utility to restore many of the Windows files that are needed for a successful boot. After several restarts, by the way, Windows 10 will try to automatically run the startup repair process. You don't even have to bother, which is really some, that's one of the reasons why probably it's a good idea to um, install, have Windows 10 installed. Um, if the startup repair doesn't automatically start, then, or it doesn't fix the problem, then you're probably going to try to use the Windows startup media to do that. You have to have this, the DVD. Um, but uh, it's always a good idea to upgrade to the latest and the greatest Windows operating system. And in this case, of course, it's Windows 10. You may go to the uh, advanced boot, try to boot up in safe mode or safe mode with networking or the command prompt where you don't load up the GUI at all. Um, again, that's one of the reasons you have to make sure that your system is constantly and periodically updated. All right. All right. So um, that's it for this chapter. So please uh, write the notes that I asked you to write and upload them as homework and i'll see you in chapter five